Michael Maiden is a Lake Oswego, Oregon, former human resource director who was accused of drugging his underage daughter's friends with Spike smoothies at a sleepover. He is accused by prosecutors of giving the prescription drug lace smoothies to three 12 year old girls during a summer sleepover. In public records, the address associated with Maiden, age 57, comes up to a home assessed to be over $1.1 million, but divorce records also show that he now lives in an RV park. According to police, quote, lace mango smoothies with benzodiapine and served the drinks to his daughter's friends. On Saturday, August 26th of 2023, the police stated, quote, were notified that three 12-year-old girls were being treated at Randall Children's Hospital after reported that they had been exposed to an unknown prescription drug while at a sleepover at a friend's house in Lake Oswego. Detectives investigated the incident and determined that 57-year-old Michael Maiden of Lake Oswego, who was the host of the sleepover, was responsible for the drugs detected in the girls' bloodstreams. A Clackamas County Grand Jury heard evidence in the case and issued an indictment against Mr. Maiden for the following charges. Three counts of causing another to ingest a controlled substance. Three counts of application of a Schedule IV controlled substance to another. Three counts of delivery of a controlled substance to a minor. Quote, Mr. Maiden turned himself in to the Clackamas County Jail on February 28th of 2024 and was lodged for the listed charges. Maiden and his wife divorced late last year. They owned a home in Oregon at the time of the sleepover. Court records also list Maiden's current address as an RV park in Vancouver and the divorce filing notes that Maiden worked as a human resource director but was out of work at the time he and his wife split up. According to police, one of the girls told them that they believed that they had, quote, unknowingly been given drugs by their friend's father and also explained that they felt groggy and even blacked out. The girls also told police that, quote, we got ready for bed at Mr. Maiden's direction. Maiden insisted that they drink the smoothies even though they had tiny white chunks throughout and sprinkled on top. One of the girls did not ingest much of the drink, and she told police that Maiden came downstairs and held, quote, his finger under one of the girl's noses and waved his hands in front of her face to see if she was asleep. The girl remained awake in fear that Mr. Maiden was going to do something to the other girls and eventually texted her mother, quote, Mom, please pick me up and say I had a family emergency. I don't feel safe. I might not respond, but please come get me, crying emoji. Please, please pick me up, please. Eventually, the girl was picked up and her parents told the other girl's parents who came to get them from Maiden's house at around 3 a.m. Quote, Mr. Maiden specifically gave each of the girls specific color reusable straws to distinguish their own drinks. Mr. Maiden was adamant that the girls drink out of their own cups. Quote, the girl stated that Mr. Maiden returned from the sliding door and stood near the headboard for what she thought was 15 minutes. The girl stated that she could feel him watching her by his presence as she kept her eyes shut, pretending to be asleep. The girl stated that when he finally went upstairs, she continued trying to get a hold of anyone she could get to come pick her up. As of right now, jail records state that Maiden is no longer being held. Maiden's attorney, Mark Cogan, stated this, Mr. Maiden is presumed innocent. We have not seen the evidence. The indictment was issued by a grand jury behind closed doors where no judge, no defense attorney was allowed. And we hope that people will reserve judgment until all the facts are known. You know, I would like to say that uh, I'm terribly shocked by this story, but after covering this for so many years, um, I can only say that the stats pretty much speak directly for themselves. Um, you have FBI stats directly in front of you, and um, it is exactly what it is. Now, I want to state this as well, that I do my best to be as even as possible. So, you know, there are some uh, you know, things listed directly up there and you can clearly see both sides, right? Which is something that a lot of people don't like to do. 
right? Because you have a lot of naysayers like, oh, why don't you uh, show the stats for, you know, for other people too? Why don't you, why don't you show? Well, we, we got the stats directly, uh, directly up there. But the fact of the matter is that this story specifically is dealing with a father who, you know, at one point in time might have had a house that might have been valued at or around $1.1 million, got divorced and <laughs> lived in an RV park. And uh, the same guy decided that he wanted to allow his daughter to have a sleepover, not just to allow the daughter to have a sleepover, but he wanted to have a sleepover because he wanted to also sleep over as well. I would like to just give a shout out to whoever that uh, young girl was, because she is the one that pretty much saved all of those girls um, from trauma, heartache. Um, you know, whatever therapy they might have had to deal with, if anything did take place, because clearly you can look at his face. This is mugshot. He does not care. He does not care. I don't want to hear nobody saying like, oh, well, you know, maybe he's off his, his meds, you know, uh, not saying that it's right. But, you know, uh, some people are, you know, just really uh, not themselves when they're on these psychotropic. Matter. I'm not trying to hear none of that. He knew exactly what it was that he was doing and what he was trying to do and what it was that he was going to do. And then he magically found some lawyer. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you were to look up the lawyer's record, this is not the first time that he has defended uh, somebody of such character um, as this. I, I very much hope after this takes place that he no longer has any visitation or anything uh, dealing with the daughter at all. I hope that the mother makes sure of that. I'm not sure where the mother is at this moment in time, um, but wherever that mother is, she needs to make sure um, that he is nowhere to be found around um, his daughter at all. She, she needs to promptly make sure. But the other thing that I note is that when it deals with like Utah, Oregon and other places out yonder, you know, some some things be going on and, you know, certain things out there. It seems to be allowed. It seems to be, um, you know, just normalized and, and it just should not be. Again, I put out these stories so that people know are in the know and are aware of what's going on specifically, um, you know, who these people are, what it is that they look like, right? What it is that they have done. I'm pretty sure this is not the first time that he has done this. This is just the first time that he has gotten caught and they let him go. They let him go. He was being held and they let him go out. Like I said, I don't know who that lawyer is, but I guess this guy has you know, certain types of connections. This is why he has that smile on his face because it was like, yeah, I did it, but <laughs> you're not going to prosecute me and uh, I'm not going to be staying here long. That's what that smile is. And this is what happens when you have men out here that are able to do things and they don't face consequences. There, there is no uh, potential risk to whatever it is that they want to do. Whatever they see that they like, they're just going to go out there and just try to take it or do whatever it is that they need to do in order to get it. And that's what he was trying to do. Again, shout out to um, the young girl that was there that, again, saved all of them by her just be like, you know what? I'm not even about to. I'm, I'm going to just sit up there and take a, a little sip just to make it seem like I'm drinking something, but I'm really not. And I'm going to make sure that I fake being asleep. Because I don't trust this guy. Like I said, she she's going to be one of those ones that she has a bright future ahead of her. She's probably going to end up saving uh, more people in the future because of her intuition, because of how it is that she perceives certain things and how it is that she pays attention. That's a girl right there that should be a leader. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about the story and everything that I listed in the comment description below. And as always, peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.